All, all in favor? Carried. Okay, so the purpose of tonight's meeting is uh, to review the five-year financial plan. Um, CAO, our first item is a report from you for budget reduction options. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Now that we know that Council is uh, on the ball, I'm not going to try and snow you on any of these things. <laughs> um, so um, at our last budget meeting, Council directed that staff um, bring forward any um, suggestions for reductions in the draft plan that staff saw as opportunities. And um, so staff met and, and I passed that on to them and, and um, thinking that that if there were none, then we'd come back to council and seek your direction on where you wanted to look in terms of service reductions. Um, fortunately, um, staff have identified some funding for projects funded in previous years for which they don't think we need to, um, we need to remain committed to, that uh, they're willing to, or recommending that um, those funds be reallocated. And so they're, they're itemized in my report. The first two are um, the responsibility of the Director of uh, Engineering and Public Works, and the uh, next four are the Director of Parks, Rec, and Heritage, I believe. So if Council has specific questions about those, um, we can ask those, those Directors. If you um, just want to say uh, that's work well done, um, we can move on. And it makes a, a considerable difference to the bottom line in the budget. Work well done. Thank you. <laughs> Does Council have questions? Councillor Haggard. Thank you. I just want to ask about the youth services and program supplies because I certainly don't want to take anything away from our youth in our community because they have so, if they need it, I don't want to take it away. I just like to find out more about so what that I is. So I could speak to that because I was actually the counselor who put that in the budget. Um, in 2015, we had a very active youth committee. Um, and we, our committee pushed to have um, money allocated specifically to youth programs um, and we just our committee then ended up kind of dissolving um, and so programs didn't end up getting developed unless there's an update um, to that um, since from the director of parks recreation and heritage but that's where the funds kind of came from Thank you very much. Council, any further questions? Councillor Paulson? Well, just the first two items again. Um, maybe we just have some comment because I know that the hot topic is maintenance and upgrade of our um, infrastructure. And um, yeah. put forward for basically for engineering for separation in the Maitland Street drainage. Um, since that time, we've obviously concentrated our efforts in the uh, Argyle and Coal Creek, which is kind of makes sense because that's the farthest, uh, farthest track for that water to go all the way to, to the sewage treatment plant. So um, yeah, at this point, I mean, at some point we will get onto that Maitland Street drainage. There's a number of projects in the five-year plan um, in future years that for individual blocks where, where we need to replace the infrastructure and we'll put the separation um, pipes in the ground at that time. Um, I don't think at this point we need, we need to do any big engineering study of that. So again, that, uh, that money can be freed up. Um, the small storm capital, <coughs> we've been putting $100,000 aside each year in, in storm, sewer and water for basically thing, items that come up during the year and quite often there are um, pieces of pipe that we just simply can't wait for um, for another year. So we'll use that money um, to do those upgrades. 
And of course, Storm is one that comes out of general and the other two are already reserved. So in 2017, we had, basically we'd spent five out of a hundred right. in that. I mean, it meant we were busy doing other things as well. So. Thank you very much. Other questions? Okay, thank you very much. So, um, Council, our, I would imagine we want to take this $302,000, 302,181, let's not forget the 181, um, and use that to reduce where our um, tax increase is currently at. Um, there, uh, that's not what we have to do with it. We could um, earmark it for other projects if there's things we want to add in. Um, we can do a combination. Um, just for context, it, we're currently at um, about a 4% budget increase to the average home. And if we allocate these funds to, if we allocate these funds to reducing that, we would be at a, roughly a 2.7% increase to the average home. So I think that's where all, closer to where all of us were hoping to end up. Um, so that would be my suggestion um, that we say thank you very much staff for finding um, these opportunities and um, allocate it to reducing the budget. And then if we wanna go through further, um, I know we have other initiatives that a few people have mentioned talking about. We can do that still and decide separately what we want to do with those funds. I, I will make a motion yeah. that we um, use those funds to reduce um, our current budget and tax increase. I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Okay, everybody wants to second. Yeah. <laughs> Are, any questions, Councillor Solda? It's not a question, it's just a little statement. I think with the assessments being as high as they are and some people are gonna be really hit with a high tax, this might be a, a good first year for them to have a lower tax. So that's my comments. Okay, any other comments? Okay, all in favor? Carrie, just like that, we're at a 2.7% increase. Really quite easy on, on council's part. A Little more difficult on staff's part. So um, we wanna thank um, all of our managers who have worked very, very hard on this budget. <laughs> That's right, we're not quite adjourned yet. Um, okay, so council from here, um, we have gone through um, the operating budget, the, ca the capital budget and the options list a number of times. Um, so unless people want to, I'm not gonna propose that we um, go through them each again, uh, but I think there are specifics people wanna bring forward. Councillor Haggard? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Did you forget my name? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> Long day. <laughs> So now we've gotten our budget in line, which I'm so happy. I can go on holidays now with a smile on my face. <laughs> but I do want to go back to the yard Jeannie left. And after we went home last week, I, it, something just didn't sit right with me, is the fact that uh, it was mentioned that we could purchase this and then use it for rentals out to the community. That just doesn't sit right with me, that using taxpayer dollars to... Uh, be in a competitive position against the private sector that's doing the same thing. Can somebody we'll respond to that? <laughs> Director Thorpe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So just to break down the, the costs a little bit further. So with the existing uh, work that we'd reviewed, so from the past uh, council meetings, the past budget meetings, as well as considering the new work that we would be doing uh, throughout the parks yard, multiplex, et cetera, it equates to about $27,000 a year in rentals. And so what that means is not considering renting the unit out to any external user group. We would have that unit paid off essentially for the value of rentals inside of three years. And so again, the, the unit at $55,000, there's no guarantee that's the average price of a, of a used unit. Mm -hmm. We do predict, predict that it would last us about 20 years. So again, the idea of paying off rentals versus uh, owning our own, it would be inside uh, three years. We would still need to go through the request for quote process. Mm -hmm. Again, there's not there, there's not an outfit that currently has a genie left on site that's waiting for us to, to bid on it. Um, through staff's research, that is what our projected uh, cost might look like. And again, that unit would, would last us around 20 years, we predict. So. Um, again, whatever the, the will of council is, I, I don't consider it so much competing with external user groups. Again, we're, we haven't even factored in what 
the potential revenue generation might look like and I'd like to be conservative on that <coughs> um, so again we it's not that we even need to look at competing with other local uh, mm -hmm. suppliers in my mind it's more looking at what's the cost benefit or the return on investment if we were to purchase our own unit versus continuing to rent so again quite a significant cost when we're looking at almost at the thirty thousand uh, dollar range per year uh, it'd also be interesting for council to note as well half of that when we're sort of doing the the number crunching half of that are projects that we would currently uh, rent a unit for that we haven't been able to get to mm -hmm. based on the fact that, that it is quite cost prohibitive to rent so um, half of that $27,000 uh, in rentals per year would actually go toward doing some preventative maintenance that we haven't had the opportunity to to date. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for doing those numbers for me. I appreciate it. And now that our budget's in line, I'm quite happy to support that. I'm just really uncomfortable with putting on the marketplace and renting it out and competing with locals for that. That's the only thing I'm comfortable with. Absolutely, and Madam Mayor, we of course we're when we look at all of the projects that need to be done. Um, I think it's great to have uh, potential revenue generation sources, um, but our priority is not to be in the market of renting our own equipment. Our priority first is to get our own projects done, of course. For sure. <laughs> Thanks for providing that, CAO. Madam Mayor, I'm just going to ask a point of clarification because it's my understanding that when we're talking about renting this piece of equipment, that is, uh, and maybe uh, Director Thorpe said this and I gapped, but um, <laughs> my understanding is we're talking about renting it to people who are renting our facility, our multiplex facility. We're not talking about people renting it to do a roofing job across town. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't be renting that, and sorry that we didn't uh, have that distinction. Is that, correct. Is that what so, we're talking about? Correct. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, so, Madam Mayor, what we're suggesting is that in the event we were to rent our this, so if we were to purchase this piece of equipment and we were to rent it, it would be with city staff as the operator in city facilities only. So, again, as, as CO is mentioning, this isn't a case of we're getting into the equipment rental business and folks are scampering around town with, the, with our equipment. It would retain under our operation in our facilities. Councillor Paulson. I am so happy to hear this conversation for a guy that spent over hundreds of hours in the old scissor lift and how indispensable it is, in particular for the multiplex, because so much of um, event support actually comes from, from the high end of the building, dropping power cords, um, fixing lights. Uh, we had a um, natural gas heater that needed repair, and I was talking to Rob Goodrow on Sunday, and he said we had to wait over a week because the actual bucket truck that we normally use was on a job in Nanaimo. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, um, like I say, it's, it's, it's another tool in the toolbox. And what, but when you need it, you need it. You need it now. And Winter Wonderland needs it real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, any other... So are there other councillors at this point that want to bring forward initiatives where they have questions? Um, Councillor Corpiel. I'm having a hard time remembering people's names tonight. <laughs> I guess I should yeah, have, I should have, got a should have coffee, asked uh, Director Thorpe while, while she was up at the podium. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, just a, a question, and I, I can't find it in any of the uh, information in front of me, but I, I know we talked about it at some point regarding a, uh, the the director of the museum and I'm wondering did we put a like a placeholder I think it's a vacant position did we put a placeholder for that position and if we did what kind of money did we allocate towards that position yeah so uh, Madam Mayor it's sort of a two parts I'll answer that question so first of all yes there is uh, a vacancy with the uh, museum manager role and of course that discussion would happen as far as filling vacancies would happen in camera uh, at the current uh, draft budget, we do have a placeholder, and it is currently underfunded in the neighborhood of $27,000. Currently underfunded in the current draft budget. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Solda. Uh, Madam Mayor, a question regarding the policing, the, the added staff member to look after the community policing. Obviously, we're not going to be hiring right away. So we have a surplus of money. Do they actually need that full amount? Because when would the hiring start in process? Because we still have to have a plan how that's, this person is actually going to be brought into the folds and operate and everything. So do you need the full amount? And if that is not needed, so we could 
pull it out mm -hmm. and give the right amount. So I was actually going to propose as well um, that we consider funding that position for only half the, of this year. Um, and then, of course, having it in our budget going forward at the full amount. Um, and my reasoning for that is I think we need to take um, the conversation to strategic planning. Um, we've had a proposal, which I think we all like the idea of moving an RCMP member um, back into duty and you know freeing up a resource there. But I think there's more conversation to be had still around what that new position will look like um, and if council has a bigger vision for it and what staff recommends. So um, CAO, do you want to comment on that? Uh, Madam Mayor, if, if council wants to start that position mid-year, we, um, we could adjust the the budget line for this year to 50% um, of that. Um, it's um, and that's that's totally doable, and then it would be 100% <laughs> of that value in, in future years. Where where the challenge is with that is sometimes we can talk ourselves into um, making a move that looks really easy this year and burdens us in future years. So um, this is not the case. You you know well what the costs are going to be in future years. So if council wants to start that position mid year, um, and it will give um, us time to consider what that looks like then um, you can give us that direction to make an adjustment. Mm -hmm. I, I'm good with that because I don't think we're right there to hire someone tomorrow. And maybe it's somebody that we're going to, we could use um, doing something else half time, full time. We don't know what the, the picture looks like yet. And I think mid year we'll be ready. So I would suggest, and I'll make a motion, that we um, reduce the funding for that position by 50% for 2019, and we put the savings into a reserve that we'll be able to access for um, our once our strategic planning is done so that we can... I'll stop my motion at that before I explain myself. Is there a seconder? Second. <laughs> That's going to be a really bad motion. Uh, so um, essentially, I want to not take that money out of our budget at this point, but shift it to a reserve so that it freezes up, it up for later in the year um, once our strategic planning is finished. Are there questions or comments on that? Ma Madam Mayor, for clarity, so uh, I think the motion says that we'll... Um, reduce that to 50% of the value, 50% of $114,000, and an equal amount will be put in in reserve for uh, pending the outcome of strategic planning. 50% of the 114. Yeah, so to total the 114. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. All in favor? Carried. All against? Uh, any opposed? <laughs> Oh, well, why are you opposed? You have to speak if you're going to vote against something. Don't just vote against. It's too late. <laughs> You've missed your chance. Positioning needs to be done now. Oh. I just think it's a position that needs to be done now. Well, uh, well, Councillor Paulson, we'd like to hear that from you. Okay. I just I thought we'd already discussed it, and it was kind of settled, so. I'm back. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another question. Councillor Solda. Yeah. My other question now is regarding the transportation services. I still question the new vehicle for the Director of Engineer. I know it's been probably talked to death. I just wonder wh what other upper management have vehicles. Maybe we just need a policy. I'd like to see a policy or something like that. I don't know. Um, so I'm just kind of curious to know because to me, if there was an emergency, does the Director of Engineer actually go out to the site? And if there was like a a tsunami or something, wouldn't they be part of the policy management group and be at, because it's actually the guys that go out there, isn't it? Or how, or so I'll let the, the CAO answer that and maybe comment on if we have a policy at this point or not. Madam Mayor, um, I believe we have a policy on vehicle use. I, I, I know we had one, I think it's still in force, and it outlines which positions um, have city issued vehicles. It's likely dated because we changed the titles of some positions. Um, not all managers in the city um, drive city vehicles. The only ones who drive city vehicles are the ones who, the managers who are expected to, to respond after hours um, or who need a vehicle for the course of their work. And in some cases they might, let me restate that, if they need a vehicle for in the course of their work, they may be assigned a vehicle. If they need to respond after hours, they're um, permitted or told to take that vehicle home. For example, the uh, fire chief who's in that room um, doesn't get to choose to leave that vehicle at, at work. We tell them to take it home, yeah, for example. I understand that. Um, and, uh, but there are examples where employees have vehicles um, and they, those vehicles stay at a city facility and the employee arrives at work and uses it but doesn't take it home because they're not on, essentially on call or called out. 
the director of um, engineering and public works is expected to be, um, needs a vehicle during the course of his work day to day and uh, is expected to respond um, after hours for um, certainly weather events and emergencies and that kind of thing and to respond on site, to be out in the field, both in the, well, primarily in the works capacity. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions? Councillor Haggard. In Joe's report of 1,400 days, he mentioned uh, that we need to probably completely rewrite our official community <coughs> plan, and he suggested starting in the fall because it's your long process, which I did not realize it took a full year to do. So maybe we could use some of that money that you put away from your reserve funds. Maybe you could put it towards starting our official community plan in the fall. Yeah, and I think that, um, like, that's a great point. I think there's huge value in us um, having money if we want to start the um, official community plan review right away, um, or if there are other projects that come up. We don't want to, I advocated for us to delay doing our strategic plan because I wanted us to have a good idea of our roles, and going through a budget cycle really gives you a good idea of your our roles and also the realities that we're st faced with. Um, so I think... I'm happy with our decision to wait on strategic planning, but we also don't want to lose a year um, because we waited. So I think that um, this gives us a little bit more flexibility at least. Any other, uh, Councillor Corbiel? Yeah, I've got a question uh, regarding the, uh, the work at the fire hall uh, with the addition of a uh, 100 foot uh, ladder truck I believe it was budgeted for eighty-eight thousand uh, dollars worth of uh, work on the on the building, which I would have assumed if it's a longer ladder, you would need more more length. But I'm, it could be height. I'm just curious why why you have to do work on the on the sure. fire hall. Um, so the it's actually a little bit of putting the cart before the horse, in all honesty, because we don't know what the truck is going to be that we purchase. So we've just struck a truck committee, and the output of that truck committee will suggest what the truck is. We'll come to council looking for that, and there may need to be structural upgrades at that point. But we could actually defer that into the 2020 budget. Oh, now you know. <laughs> well, I didn't really know the process, to be honest. I thought I was supposed to say this during this meeting. So <laughs> you, were, you were supposed to say that within five minutes of arriving at your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I was supposed to get introduced at the beginning of the meeting. <laughs> Councillor Corville, do you have anything as a follow-up to that? Uh, well, not for the fire chief, but uh, I thank you for for that. You must not have got the memo that uh, Tim sent out last week. No, I, I did get the memo. I just didn't understand the process that I was supposed to give it to him. Now, we can make that spend, uh, in all honesty. I think what will end up happening is, is the truck committee will conclude their work probably in, probably by the end of Q3. So at that point, we'll be able to make the structural upgrades should they be required. Um, that's why I was okay with leaving it in, but certainly if we were tight on, on cash at this point, it would be something that I could defer to 2020. Okay. So. Much appreciated. I would um, love to see it deferred to Me 2020 too. and um, not even necessarily just to um, put it out a year, but to um, be able to put forward, a, I would think, a more um, detail or accurate budget once we know what truck we're getting for what that work will actually cost in case we underfund it or overfund it by estimating in the first year. I concur with that. Okay. I will make a motion that we put it off to 2020 and that we thank you. I thank second you. that. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you are in our good You only get right thanked now. if you put forward budget cuts. <laughs> now we're down to 1.8. <laughs> Is there something back in now? <laughs> oh, was there a seconder for that? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, any further conversation? <laughs> All in favor? Carried. Uh, Councillor Hager, did you want to put something back in? <laughs> well, don't put something back in unless you already know you want to put it back in because you care that much about it. But I want to bring forward um, the cruise ship initiatives and maybe um, we could have um, Mr. Deacon come up and just remind us, um, I think I remember what the numbers were, but um, what work we need to consider. <laughs> Madam Mayor, uh, contrary to uh, the conversation on social media, 
the amount that we're looking for for uh, the cruise ship in initiative is 13,500 bucks. So uh, I may have confused the conversation by bringing forward some additional spends that I thought, uh, or based on uh, Aquila's uh, walkthrough with us, that I thought would benefit the uh, community at large. And that was um, approximately $20,000 additional. But those were for other items uh, that um, would uh, benefit um, us well beyond the cruise ship. An example is a safer walkway through uh, SO Beach, uh, uh, a selfie uh, portrait frame. Uh, we would take advantage of those uh, year round um, and certainly during the tourist season. Um, and I do note that given this afternoon's discussion where uh, funding from $10,000 uh, from the community forest was going into uh, a stream, a dedicated stream uh, on the community investment program and that there had been a recommendation uh, was that we fund the uh, cruise ship have to do or um, recommended to do through that, it does uh, fall short because uh, that was uh, 10,000 and we're looking at 13.5. And if you want to do other initiatives that would uh, benefit uh, the community, um, there's another uh, $20,000. Now included in that though, was a placeholder for uh, painting of uh, the marine building. And that uh, is um, conditional on uh, Mr. Savard uh, and I being able to get a paint company to uh, step up to the plate and contribute the rest. Okay, council, any questions? Councillor Paulson. I'd like to make a motion that we put the 13500 into our options list back in and fund it fully. That way the um, community forest fund can be actually used in the community investment program for other groups. Yep. So I'd like to make that motion. I'll second that. Are there any comments from council? Everyone's tired. All in favor? No. Carried. Councillor Haggard. I do have something I'd like to put back on the table. Okay. <laughs> um, when I was, when we first originally started this, one of our priorities was safety, and we really looked at that. And I really believe that upgrading our street lighting is a safety issue because we do have a lot of foggy, rainy nights in our community, and I just think that should be a priority now that we've give. Um, the fire department has we've deferred that money, so I would like to replace it with that just for the safety issues so Conversation yeah council councillor Solda is that the um, it was fifty thousand dollars. Okay. I just wanted to street just lights upgrades yeah. are on the main yeah. roads. Yeah, that's fine. Councillor Paulson I'm a little confused just on this one um, Maybe mr. Takama could could talk about because um, we did the upgrade to LED lighting in all of our city owned poles right on the main main roads so is this replacing poles or thank you madam mayor um, so I think I'm not sure if I expressed this entirely last time we talked about it but that 50,000 was put in it, it's really a guesstimate of some improvements that we could make um, you're, you're correct, all our city-owned um, streetlights have been upgraded. Th they include a variety of wattages, so what we could do is change out, increase the wattage on some of the lower wattage um, streetlights on, on, again, on the busier streets or on, on maybe the, the darker 
streets are the ones that are considered a little, um, you know, where there's more pedestrians or cyclists, that yeah. kind of thing. It's, yeah. it's something that I'd have to spend more time looking at. Um, but also, I mean, if we're talking about hydro and lights, if I, if I put a request to hydro to add a light, all it does is add one light to our flat rate. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't really affect the budget. It affects the operational <coughs> budget in terms of, of our, our, what we pay in hydro. Um, so yeah, I'd really have to think about what improvements we could make, but I think it's more around either adding um, more poles and lights, which again, 50 grand would be pretty, wouldn't go very far if we had to add underground wiring and, mm -hmm. and more poles and bases and stuff. But I think in terms of looking at what we can do in, in terms of actually increasing the lighting, that, that that's more of what I was considering. So council, my um, feeling is that we should, um, I think lighting is a priority, but I think that um, I've heard a lot of people in the community talk about um, like a, an incentive program to put in alley lighting. Um, and I think that there's other ways we could potentially um, improve the general uh, like lighting in our community. Um, I'm not sure that the street lights, like adding a few street poles is gonna get the most bang for our buck. So I would suggest that we um, take that 88,000 and again, put it into our reserve um, to spend at a later point in the year once we've set what the priorities are. And I think we should consider um, talking to RCMP about this and, and um, getting more information before we decide what the highest priority are, is there. I, I could be wrong, but I think the 88,000 was also gas tax. I'm not sure if that. It was, we can gas shift tax gas tax. We got lots of gas tax eligible projects. <laughs> I agree with that, but I, we really need to look at lighting wherever yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah I agree I, completely. Yeah, thank you. For sure. So we do have a motion to um, move the 50000 back into our budget. Um, can we just withdraw the motion then? Sure, we could. You want us to withdraw it or vote it down? Um, okay. 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 Um, so uh, one thing that I want to consider the numbers on is um, the rest of the McLean Mill funding. So we have 190,000 roughly allocated in our budget right now for McLean Mill and we have voted on an option that's 126,000 for their operating budget for the year. Um, I would like to see us put the rest of those funds about $60,000, dollars aside as well. Um, our CAO has indicated there may be other costs associated with um, running the mill this year. Um, so I don't think we should take it out of our budget, but I think it's important to um, look at that money as um, advancing strategic initiatives. CAO, do you want to? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, if, if council takes it out of the budget um, and, and unassigns it to McLean Mill, then uh, if we have cost overruns or work that we hadn't anticipated for McLean Mill, then we'll have to come to council mid-year and ask for um, allocation of funds. If you leave it in earmarked for McLean Mill, then we'll be able to expand that just, so, just for your background. Um, also, for your knowledge, uh, yes, the budget, the operating budget in the current draft budget is $191,000. Um, the MMS proposal is 126300 although their proposal did not include management of the, the heritage zone. So um, you, you heard this early, uh, earlier meeting today that they want to um, revisit and, and come back to council with a different budget. I don't know if we have time for that, depending on how many meetings we have. Um, so if you were to, uh, to reduce the, the city's budget to reflect their minimum operations budget, there's a difference of $64,700 that you would be, uh, you're suggesting move to reserves. Um, I'd like you to know that um, we've already issued 75,000 of those dollars to McLean Mill early in, in January. I'm not sure where they are in terms of spending that. Um, so if you reduce the budget to 126 and they've already received 75, there's only 51,000 left allotted. Um, you also heard at an earlier meeting that there's, um, we're going to be incurring costs to inspect septic fields. And um, if there's anything outstanding there, we'll be incurring costs to fix those septic fields. So I just want you to forewarn that there's costs coming um, it, that um, and, co and maybe some costs coming that we don't know about yet. And um, either we can budget in anticipation of those or we can respond to those mid-year by saying we've had an unforeseen cost. Sometimes that's more difficult to respond to um, in terms of having repeat requests for funding, um, all for your background. 
Councillor Solta. So just to let me understand this, we passed the McLean Mill today, but there is going to be a lot more costs we're going to incur. Is that... I, I That's guess what it, I'm afraid of. In essence, I'm, I'm suggesting that there's going to be costs that um, are outside of their ability to pay. So we've already given them 75. Um, if, if you reduce the budget to 126, our budget to 126, there's only $51,000 left for the whole year that we could allocate to them. And I would, I would hold some of that back so we could pay costs the city's incurring. So um, we might be talking about $40,000 from McLean Mill Society for the rest of the year. And I don't know where they are on the... On the expanding their first installment but um, I think they're gonna need more money than that uh, but but they've given us a budget of 126,000 for this year so that. and and you know yes we've given them $75,000 already um, it's February so I am you know in no way under the expectation that they should have spent anywhere near most of that $75,000 I understand that they have had some costs um, outside of um, what was expected but when we are presented a budget of $126,000, um, I wouldn't personally expect only having $50,000 left of it um, to be an issue. They presented us that budget. They know where they're at for the year. Um, I know that the scope has changed slightly since, but um, there's, you know, there's the insurance issue, there's, um, or the insurance cost that we spoke about as well, that's $25,000 in that budget that we don't expect that they will largely have. So my thought in passing that earlier was not that we were going to be giving them a substantially a substantial amount more than um than what we've passed and that is my concern too madam mayor and um i just have one quick question who's going to look after the the bookkeeping accounting part of the mclean's mill is that the mms society i guess i should have asked that earlier because if not i i would like to see accounting brought back to the audit committee and brought forward to council Madam Mayor, I, th I believe there was, there's a budget line in their in MMS's budget <coughs> budget submission. I believe it was in the range of ten thousand dollars for accounting. Yeah. And and um, the McLean Mill Society will bring back financial reporting to council as you determine. So uh, if you tell them what you want, they should do that. I would like to have it, it brought to the account uh, to the audit committee, ever, just like um, the city does. Madam Mayor, that would if if council desires to have the McLean Mill Society report financially to the audit committee, then a direction would, a, a, a motion passed by council would make that happen. Do we need to make a, a motion now or do you want to wait, we Madam Mayor? Yeah, so um, just for clarity and background, they have reported um, their financials uh, up until the end of the year. Um, they were reporting their financials every month to council directly as a whole. Um, the audit committee may be a good place for that, um, but I think we just need to tell them what we want. I don't personally have enough background on um, what kind of normal process. I, there is no normal process with this. Never mind. Madam Mayor, we have discussed McLean Mill Society reporting financially through the audit committee, yep. and um, when MMS, MMS was established, um, Council of the Day felt strongly that they wanted to, to be fully aware and informed, yep. and they wanted monthly reports here. Um, that is unusual because mm -hmm. um, every every other financial report goes through the audit committee. Mm -hmm. And um, if council now wants to um, to to mirror uh, with MMS what we do in all other ways, we could we could have them report to the audit committee. If council still wants, for other reasons, whatever reasons, to be reporting here on a regular basis, you can tell us what you want. Okay, Councillor Solda. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. But the audit committee does report back to the council anyway, so the council can yep. ask all the questions they want at the time too. So it just goes through two checks. I mean, that's for sure. or yep. three checks through the city and back to the council and council. Yeah. So. Do you want to make a motion? I do. <laughs> I would like the MMS Society accounting be presented to the audit committee and then to council. I'll second that. Any comments from those on the audit committee? <laughs> no, I just um, I, I think the decision the decision here is is do we want um, monthly council reports from McLean Mill Society or do we want to go to quarterly reports? I don't have a problem with the motion. It's just what we as a group do we want reporting, you know, once a month from McLean Mill Society instead of quarterly. Councillor Washington. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I sort of have to agree with Councillor Paulson. Right now, they're they're young and they're new, and they're walking on 
matchstick, so to speak, and, and I, I think we need a month-to-month -month mm -hmm. on the McLean, at least for 2019. Mm -hmm. Councillor Poon? When was their last report to us? Because I don't recall anything. <laughs> I can't remember exactly, but it was toward the end of last year. It might have been just before the election. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we we don't know anything about their bank balance at the moment, I guess? CAO? Madam Mayor, um, McLean Mill Society provided uh, 2018 financials um, at, the, at a re previous budget meeting. Mm -hmm. It was attached to their budget submission for 2019. But they, they had not um, <coughs> provided monthly reports mm -hmm. through the end of 2018. Um, they, they hadn't made every month. Mm -hmm. they're, they're paying, excuse me, Madam Mayor, there's a budget line for accounting, so they should be up to date, they should be fine, and I don't see there's a problem. Council Corbiel. I would uh, kind of assume if they did it quarterly, it would be a lot less onerous on the society mm -hmm. versus having to do them do it monthly and it seems like uh, you know it's a hard uh, road to hoe as it is so if we can make it easier on that society I would uh, tend to lean towards doing it quarterly. I would feel the same way um, specifically because um, it probably will be less costly as well if we're asking for reports from the accountant. Uh, they have an accountant and bookkeeper handling their books. Um, they're not doing it themselves. So um, the more we ask for from them, the more expensive it would be. Um, I don't have concern about, I don't have concern to the level that I think we need to see their, um, you know, bank statements every month. I, don't. Um, I think we need to tell them what our budget expectations are and expect that they're going to meet that and seeing them quarterly will let us know that they're on track with where we expect them to be. So that's my feeling. Councillor Solda. If it's okay with the seconder, I will put an amendment in um, that we see it quarterly. It'll probably, yes, okay. Whoever was my seconder? I think it was me, actually. Oh, okay. But it would naturally come quarterly to the audit. Yeah, it would because yeah. audit meets quarterly Okay, anyway, that's fine, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, on the motion to ask M or tell MMS we would like their financials to be submitted to the audit report quarterly, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so we got a bit diverted from our topic of conversation there, which was um, the McLean Mill budget. Uh, so currently we have $191,000 allocated to McLean Mill, $126,000 roughly um, approved earlier for the minimal operations um, conversation. What would council like to see done? Do we want to leave the budget line at 191? Councillor Haggard. I think we should leave it because I think as CEO said, there are probably going to be extra costs coming forward, so I think we should leave it. Councillor Solda. I don't have a problem leaving it into a, a little contingency fund for it. I just don't, we gave a budget today. They presented what they wanted. That's what we gave them. I understand if there's going to be things to do with the, the dam and that, because I did ask you that question, what extras is there going to be? And I, the dam might come as an overrun or something. I can see it going into something like that. That's but that yeah, mm -hmm. but the rest, I, I have questions on. CAO. Did you have a question, Madam Mayor? I'll think about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> figuring out this out as we go. If if council wants to um, wants to tax for the money, basically, but doesn't want to commit it to McLean Mill at this point in time, um, you could increase the contingency budget. For example, um, we have a two hundred thousand dollar contingency budget. If you want to put the rest into that line, you could increase that line which would put that money, then you would still have access to the money, but it would be in, at council's discretion. Or you could put it, um, you could have it budgeted for um, and, and uh, reserved pending council's direction after t strategic planning. So that would still put it in your hands. I'm fine with doing either of those, but I personally um, don't want to leave it just earmarked for McLean Mill. Um, I think that if we leave the budget where it's at, it sets the, it sets the expectation that we... Um, might be okay with doing more out there this year than we have kind of agreed as a council to do. So I would be fine with moving it to either reserve. Councillor Washington. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my only concern is that septic field that they keep talking about. Um, I know in my, my past life working for a septic field person who pumps septic fields, we did spend quite a bit of time out at McLean's Mill. So I, th I, think, I think we're in for a septic upgrade. CAO, can you comment? Because we have had the septic field inspected. Just... Um Yes, Madam Mayor, we had the septic field inspected by the um, contractor that installed the septic field, and uh, there were some, some breakage, breakages found in, in the system that were repaired, and um, then it came to light that, that that installer was not licensed to inspect existing mm -hmm. systems. So um, we, had a, we asked Island Health if they, wanted, if they required us to do an inspection. They said they recommended it was good practice, so that's what we're doing. We're getting another inspector to come in who's licensed to inspect existing fields. So that person may or may not find um, shortfalls. I just don't know. Okay. Councillor Solda? I agree in the contingency fund, so I'll move a motion that we take the, um, how much money was that that we would move? 65,000? 65, 65, 64. 64, 700 by my account. Okay, we move it into a contingency fund. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, um, and since we didn't really specify earlier, um, the $88,000 coming from the fire hall um, is gas tax funds. Um, I would make a motion that we see if we can um, rearrange gas tax projects and move that $88,000 into a strategic initiatives reserve CAO. Madam Mayor, because that uh, council directed that project be moved to 2020, um, those funds are still earmarked for that project. So they're not available for redeployment is, is what, uh, I just have a text from the Director of Finance. Wouldn't we be funding it in 2020? I, I have a text from the Director of Finance. That's, that's all I know. But so typically if we move a project from 2019 to 2020, we wouldn't still fund it in 2019. No, but the gas taxes is a little bit different. Um, we get them I, and, they, and we expend them over a couple of years. And I'm sorry I don't have the, the situational and awareness, but I'm just being told <coughs> by text that, we, okay. um, that we, those funds are still allocated. So you may not be able to reallocate them. Okay. You could drop the project, the DOORS project, and allocate those funds and then repopulate funding for that project next year. I don't think we want to drop the project. So the project moves. Okay. Okay. Are there anything else council wants to bring forward? I think we're ready to go. I'm <laughs> <laughs> excited. <laughs> hey, did you just did you just hear Councillor Paulson is excited about this budget? <laughs> Jack. He just wrote a check mark on his page, so I think that's budget passed. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Council, um, I feel the same way that we are um, very close, if not um, finished, with where we're at um, for the budget. And I looked at some numbers earlier, and I just wanted to share with Council. Um, I know this is a difficult budget year because we don't have that strategic plan done, so we don't have you know collective priorities kind of set out. But what I heard through our conversation um, through these budget meetings is that since we didn't have strate strategic initiatives, um, we set public safety as an initiative, and we set infrastructure renewal as an initiative. Um, of course, we, we added about $300,000, well, actually less because we just took a little bit out for part of this year, but $240,000 to our budget um, to improve efficiencies at the RCMP. Um, that was important to everyone on council. And for infrastructure renewal, I did some quick numbers earlier today looking at the capital projects funded from general revenue, um, which is how we were tracking the last couple of years the funds that we were spending on infrastructure. And last year we spent 823000 from general revenue on capital projects, and this year we're at 998000 So that's up over 20%, um, and I think that that is 
a huge win for the city in terms of how we're prioritizing our infrastructure. So um, I want to really thank staff who's worked very hard on this budget. Um, it's not been an easy budget um, and council as well because um, it's not easy to do a budget without a strategic plan. So um, specifically our city clerk for all these meetings we've been asking for. <laughs> Um, so I am personally comfortable with where the budget is at. Um, we are just about 2.75% um, average to or increase to the average single family home with, by my numbers right now, it could be slightly off. Councillor Poon. Is there any update on the fireworks thing that's on the options list? So Councillor Solda and I have not had an opportunity yet to bring it to the ACRD, but on Wednesday is um, a committee of the whole meeting for the ACRD and Councillor Paulson is going to be going in my place. So it will be bring, brought forward then. Okay. Councillor Haggard. Thank you, Madam Mayor. At the very beginning of this process, the CAO said he challenged his staff to be innovative with this budget. And I want to congratulate the staff for being extremely innovative, establishing partnerships in the community, and very, being very proactive about looking for grants. So kudos to the staff. I think Joe hit it, said it exactly. We've got great staff. So thank you so much. Okay. Would council like to move that we are moving forward to, I don't know, what, what motion do we need to make? Prepare the bylaws? Exactly, Madam Mayor. If Council is satisfied with where things are at, you can give direction now to um, direct staff to come back with the five-year financial plan bylaw for consideration. So move, Madam Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. It's stereo. Second. <laughs> you okay. Um, all in favor? <laughs> Carried. That's right. Okay. Um, input from the public? Questions? I don't see any public. <laughs> hey, David's here. <laughs> we got, got the sleuth is here. The That's right. The intrepid reporter. <laughs> okay. Would somebody like to move adjournment? So Second. All in favor? Carried.